Hey YouTube, this is Heiko. Uh, random video real quick. Um, working on my 1977 VW bus again, as I often do. And uh, today I'm working on my brakes. At least that was the main intention. Now I noticed that my uh, uh, ball joint boots had slipped off of the lower edge where they are supposed to be retained. So I had to fix that. Of course, couldn't just look at it, clean it up, re-grease, put it back on. And uh, then I took my old uh, brake discs off. Uh, they still look pretty good. I haven't measured them, but um, I started getting a lot of noise. You can tell when I go down a hill, and we live in the mountains. I mean, we're living at 4,700 feet. My workplace is at 6,200 feet. And I drive around here a lot, just for fun. It's not my daily driver, but going down the hill and you have to step on your brakes more often. Um, it just heats up the the inner uh, diameter of the disc, uh, kind of discolored already a little bit. And uh, yeah, I try to fix it. I scuff them up. I sand it down the the brake pad a little bit and uh, put some copper paste behind the pads so on the on the back side of the pads. Also cleaned the surfaces where they glide on um, to eliminate any kind of noise but it's more a shutter than a squeaking squeaking noise I can kind of live with but it was more a shutter in the steering wheel from both brakes and so I got new ones brand new made by Brembo uh, it's OEM equipment uh, already degreased them you always have to degrease them use some brake cleaner that's what that stuff is for uh, those are always coated in some corrosion protection and you have to clean them up before you put it together. So they are nice and clean and no grease and no oil and nothing. Um, here I'm on the driver's side. Um, what I did uh, at the same time, I checked my wheel bearings. Sorry. Um, started using this Canon FS1000 camera. Uh, <laughs> it's the first time today. It's probably going to make better video than my uh, cell phone. So uh, let's see how that works. Uh, yeah, so you can see all the fresh grease. I just had those apart and re-greased them when I installed my drop spindles here. The steering knuckle yeah, is um, a two and a half inch drop spindle. Um, so I already re-greased them once. This time I only checked for play. Um, the Bentley manual that I use uh, says that it's supposed to have a little bit of some play. Here, let's let's look at it real quick. It says on that page here. You can see it. Uh, let's see. Light off. No, you can't read it in the camera. Uh, actual play is between 0.03 and 0.12 millimeters. That's a pretty broad range in inches. It's point. 0.01 to 0.005 inches. Um, always go by the manual. I, I don't make up those things on the fly. So it says pretty much it's supposed to have some play and you're supposed to test that with an indicator dial, dial indicator as it's probably named I guess, dial indicator. I don't have one of those uh, so I pretty much wing it. What I do is Oops, there we go. Check it the place. So you can see this nut here, split nut. There's a bolt going through that secures it. You t take this bolt loose and then you can move this split nut by hand. Move it around really easily actually. And so I just tighten it with my fingers to the point where there is no play and then I back it off ever so slightly and then I tighten this up. The bolt needs to be tightened up to somewhere between 10 and 20 Newton meters. That's what the Bentley manual tells me. And then uh, after I actually uh, tighten the bolt down, I wiggle and make sure that there is, even if it's ever so slightly, there is some play. And we're talking about three hundredths of a millimeter to uh, 0 0.12 of a millimeter. So three hundredths or twelve hundredths of a millimeter. 
so um, the margin is pretty big and you know if you have a little bit of a wiggle then you're probably at the lower spectrum or the lower end of it and that's where I leave it um, maybe one day I will have a dial indicator and check it again but I make sure that it's not snug it needs to have a little bit of play or else the bearing will heat up and then probably destroy itself anyways um, that's what I just did wiggle around a little bit adjusted this um, it's a Allen key that goes in here and I have a little um, little um, torque wrench clicked it already to 20 newton meters in the book they talk about one meter kilogram or up to two meter kilogram and one meter kilogram is 10 newton meters so it's pretty easy to convert um, made sure it's still greased up there's still plenty of grease in there I got brand new dust caps not that the old ones were broken but I got those really cheap and you know knowing that you have a brand new part on your bus is kind of nice so I put it on anyways sorry for the wiggle um, let's pause this here for a second I turn you back on once I'm uh, continuing all right guys I'm back um, so I just paused to um, get my power cord for my camera plugged in somewhere else um, besides checking the wheel bearing play and replacing the brake disc I also want to install this little rubber bushing there see that this here is the drive for the speedometer and this rubber bushing has been missing since the beginning of time probably uh, ever since I had the bus so um, drop spindle has one problem this port here used to be down there on a regular spindle steering knuckle now it's so high up here that it interferes with the bolt of one of the ball joints kind of bad so I'll probably have to zip tie this down a little bit or else every time you make a movement with a steering wheel this will rub on the little bolt here so I put this rubber bushing in there didn't have one before we'll see what happens um, adjusted the play of the um, what is the name wheel bearings and I'm going to put the um, brake disc on there let's see if I can uh, put you here somewhere so that you can follow the progress let's see what we can do let's see can't really see anything huh um, let's see yeah sorry the camera work is definitely not my strong suit but uh, now we're placing it a little higher here and that should work So, all right, and uh, before I do anything else, I'm uh, going to put the dust cap back on there. Let's check one more time if I torque this bolt here. And now we're going to put the, you're on camera, Sophia. Um, now we're going to put this dust cover back on there. I hope I'm not blocking everything. Camera, Sophia. Um. So we're going to put this dust cover back on here. I actually could potentially pull this back a little bit so the drive of the speedometer doesn't get hit by the hammer yeah, and that's all the way on always like to use a uh, 
that low hammer because you don't want to ever dent this or you know make it look ugly and then push the speedometer cable back through I have a little clip that I also just bought because I lost the other one last time I messed around with this so this time I ordered two two of those clips that go right on the end of the speedometer drive they're really tiny see already dropped one um, so let's put that back on in the groove there and then you need a nice screwdriver to push it in so this is back together and um, before we put the new brake disc on there of course you want to make sure that your hub is really clean um, no rust or anything but I just had it apart so um, it's it's really clean I, I sanded everything down or not sanded I used a wire brush to clean that all up and uh, good time to also rub down your bolts here so this looks all really good the dust cap is on my, finally my new little uh, circ clip is back on there now I can uh, grab the brake disc brake disc like I said brand new made by uh, Brembo which is a reputable brake parts manufacturer I didn't want to go by with cheap you know with brakes you don't want to um, buy the cheap stuff I actually ordered these through AutoZone and they shipped them to my house for free that was the best part so I didn't even have to go and pick them up no I have to take that back this one was not um, done through AutoZone uh, I just recently did uh, front brakes on my daily driver which is a 2006 Saab 93 and those were order, ordered uh, through um, AutoZone. These here I bought at uh, Napa Auto Parts. Uh, it was relatively expensive. I mean, it's not a car that they sell brake parts for on a daily basis, but uh, so I'm just gonna secure those bolts here. And those really, I mean, they don't need to be torqued to anything because they're really just holding the brake disc in place until you're done with your work and you put the wheel back on there. Um, yeah, let me pause there for a second. Well, it's about a minute later. Um, I just got a clean. clean rag I just want to wipe down the uh, brake disc one more time because I really don't want to introduce any greasy stuff into my brake pads um, I mean they're used but they're so good and you just want to make sure that it's really clean the better the brakes will break in and uh, you will not have any problems with that so now I'm going to put the brake uh, saddle back on there and uh, before I do that let's pause here for a second I'll be right back it's probably a good idea to always let your family know that you're doing some stuff on YouTube or else there will be a million interruptions and uh, yeah, so I just walked upstairs and told them that I'm doing a little bit of a video. Um, so like I said, I will put the um, caliper back on there. Uh, shouldn't be a problem to slide it right over. Usually the lip that slowly develops on the edge of a uh, old brake disc is the same diameter or close to it than the new one. I already spread it enough to pull it off the old one. But let's see here real quick. 
Uh, when you fiddle around with your brake caliper, you always want to make sure that you never hang the weight of the caliper on the brake line. Oh, here we go. Slides right on. I'm not planning on cleaning anything. Like I said, I already did that not too long ago. Um, and uh, cleaned all the sliding, gliding surfaces. Oh, let's see here. One more time, pulling it off. Forgot one major important thing. Um, it's not mandatory by manual or by manufacturer, but I always put some Loctite on everything that I put back together, especially when it comes to to uh, suspension or uh, brakes. And uh, I, of course, don't want to forget to do that this time. Um, I, I use this stuff here, Loctite 245. I have one of those huge packages, 250 milliliter. That's a quarter of a liter. Um, so I've had this for, I don't even know how many years, uh, 10, 15 years. You always use tiny little amounts of this. So this huge package will last you a lifetime. Another thing that I like to do is clean the threads on those bolts that I put through the caliper. Uh, clean those up so that the Loctite actually has a surface to stick to. You know? um, it's also kind of a good idea to use some brake cleaner or something that degreases the surface. It's just like when you're painting something you want to make sure it's uh, clean and grease free and uh, same of course works for Loctite. Every glue works better than uh, better when it's uh, applied on a clean surface. So let's do this. Usually put just a drop on there. I don't know if you even can see it. Drop and then just park him here for now. Let's do the other one. Big drop and park it here for now. You know, it's not supposed to inhibit ever taking this bolt off again. Um, it just there's a little bit of uh, insurance that the bolt will not come loose by itself. And uh, that's kind of important. The bolts here on this Type 2, it's a 1977 bay window. Uh, the two bolts are the same thread size. I think it's a uh, 12 millimeter, but uh, one has a step on it, the other one doesn't. So it will only fit in one way. And, uh, and then you just have to wiggle, wiggle. Where's the hole it's supposed to go into? Mm -hmm. Where is it? Where is it? There we go. There are those little washers that came with my drop spindle setup. They go between the steering knuckle or the drop spindle and the caliper. So that makes it a little bit more difficult to put those bolts through because you have to kind of slide those in between the caliper and the steering knuckle and then line it all up. Uh, that's why I've been wiggling around here a little bit, but not too bad, not too bad. Let's see. There we go, number two is in. And then, um, yeah, this is an old Dewalt uh, impact driver that you use for your deck screws. But um, Harbor Freight sells a, a set of those bits that allow you to put quarter inch drive, three eighths, and even half inch um, nuts on there. Uh, nuts, sockets for nuts or bolts. Um, you put that into your impact driver makes work so much faster instead of you know using your ratchet wrench or your um, 
normal wrench and you are turning it little by little by little. This is not supposed to replace a torque wrench when you are tightening this up, but um, it makes work so much faster. You just uh, start the bolt with your finger and then once you, that's done you put the little impact driver on there and it's already done. So lately, since I discovered that on some other YouTube channel, someone did this, I just never thought about it. You know, even though I have two of those impact drivers sitting around here, I started doing that myself for pretty much everything. It's uh, made life so much easier working on the car. Okay, so this is uh, the two bolts of the caliper. And then I have to line up the, um, the brake line here in the back. They are kind of stiff. And then there's a little clip that goes onto that brake line that holds it to the steering knuckle. And then uh, I wish I would have a normal hammer here right now to drive this little clip in. Perfect. All right, that looks good. Now let's take a look at the manual real quick. What it says, um, the caliper, the caliper bolts. On vehicles with disc brakes, install the brake caliper torque, the M12 bolt, 96, 1996 through 1972 with 10 meter kilogram, and then later 16 meter kilogram. So 16 meter kilogram, as I mentioned, one meter kilogram is 10 newton meter. So this is asking for 160 newton meter. So let's crank up my torque wrench here, my big one. 54, 56, 58. There we go, 160. Because uh, you definitely don't wanna forget to do that um, when you're doing brakes. This is so important. Don't forget to torque those things down like your caliper bolts and nuts. Um, double check everything, triple check everything. Uh, see, no, we already have one problem. I need an extension for this. Just grabbed a short extension. Nice thing is um, the, the connecting part of that short extension is almost like a swivel joint. So you have a little bit play in there. Makes it uh, easier sometimes to line up your torque wrench or your wrench with one of the bolts that you're trying to work on. There we go, number one. Two, and then I go usually twice on each. There we go. And another one. So I did everything pretty much. Tighten those two little ones down just with a impact driver. It's probably not much, but it's really only to hold the brake disc in place until you put your lug nuts on here. Uh, like I said, I missed with a ball joint. Torque those down. I torqued the two bolts going through the caliper into the steering knuckle. Cleaned up everything nicely. Put the uh, brake line back in place and put a clip back on there. Put my speedometer drive back through the steering knuckle and the 
wheel hub sticking out right here, new clip on there, new bushing in the back. And really the only last thing before, before I put the wheel back on is to um, get a zip tie, large zip tie, and just zip tie this uh, speedometer drive so that uh, it stays away from that ball joint bolt. And I really only want to pull it down ever so slightly because I don't want to interfere with the, um, with the speedometer drive really. Just ever so slightly bending it down. Easy curvature. There we go. A couple of clicks here on my zip tie. So, and I have the key in the ignition so I can uh, turn my steering knuckle. I just want to see that we don't have interference here with that bolt. There we go. It's a little bit of play, maybe a little more here. That looks good. Yeah, that looks good. Nice round curvature here. Yeah, it's pushing in there. Wow. Yeah, that went pretty well. Now I have to do the other side. Uh, kind of the nice part is also if you install new <laughs> Sorry guys. Yeah, um, when I tell my family I don't want to be interrupted, uh, that doesn't work most of the time. So yeah, anyways, clean break. We're going camping a uh, week from now or nine days from now in uh, Cathedral State Park in Nevada. I know it's October, but uh, out there in the middle of the desert temperatures at night get pretty frosty. Uh, forecasted to be in the mid 40s but during the day you still get temperatures in the 80s um, and we have decent um, sleeping bags and space heater I have a catalytic heater that doesn't put out too much uh, carbon monoxide and uh, yeah so this is one of the parts next is going to be the other side all right I hope you like this type of video uh, watching me do stuff uh, that's pretty much what it's going to be oh you might have noticed I almost forgot I took my uh, shock loose when I uh, work with the ball joints to have a little bit more play and everything I have to of course put that back as well uh, it's a long bolt same thing I'm gonna clean this first clean clean And, uh, and then, uh, if I remember correctly, do I remember correctly? The bolt goes through the shock into the shock mount, and then a washer and uh, and nut goes on from the other side. And uh, again, some blue Loctite. You know, blue Loctite is it's not really heat resistant. It's also not like super duper um, hard setting, but it's better than nothing. And uh, I just like to put that on everything that I take apart because I'm, you know, I want to do everything uh, 110%. I know it's, it doesn't make sense, 100%. Whereas other shops probably do it 80%, so I like to do 100%. And then again, my friend. Yeah. I should put a wrench on that on the back. Flying. And then everything falls to the ground. The washer here.
Kind of the surprising part is on those uh, suspension parts that those nuts are not necessarily self-locking or nylock or anything. Um, some of them are just plain old, probably higher grade. Um, you know, here in the States they use grade 5 and grade A. Uh, in the metric world where I grew up, uh, it's um, calculated in Newton meter, uh, the strength of the material. So there's grade 8.8, .8, then there's 10.9, and then there's 12.9. Uh, I once knew what that stands for. I could even do the calculation how many Newton meters per square millimeter of uh, strength that is, but I forgot. So you just need to take it. So this, did this, and now one last peek at my trusted manual here. Uh, Finding out torque, 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 torque. Uh, yeah. Um, front axle to frame, upper shock absorber mounting, nut, 5 meter kilogram, yeah, 50 newton meters, okay, that is easy, easily achieved, let's see which one can do this, oh, let's do the big one, 50 newton meters. You have to have a good range of uh, torque wrenches, small, big, everything in between. So 42, 44, 46, 48, 50. Here we go. That's what we wanted. 17 millimeter wrench on the back. And a 19 millimeter socket on the front. Let's do that one more time. A little more. A little more. Here we go. So, yeah, this is done. Now, finally, hope we didn't forget anything. Brake line, this thing, cap, and my wife's waiting for me. So, I guess this is time to say goodbye. Uh, if you like this stuff, uh, like it in, in YouTube. Uh, put your comments at the bottom if you have any questions or comments on what I'm doing here. Maybe some advice. Uh, maybe you want to tell me to find another hobby. <laughs> I would totally understand. And subscribe if you like this type of video. Take care. Bye.